The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these I give will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him. And suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise he may be seated. I remember a time in middle school, parochial middle school, where I was tested. It was a test of friendship, and I failed. A lie that sounded like the truth lured me in. She deserves it. Look what she did to you. That's how it started. I don't know what it was that made me so angry at Mary, but I do remember the day that I chose to sit at a different lunch table, and someone whispered in my ear, she deserves it. Look what she did to you. The lie which sounded like the truth was the start of my temptation. That lie distorted the truth, which snowballed into an unkind letter that included words that were not G-rated. It also seemed that everyone in the class was behind this letter. Even Steve Huberty, who I had a crush on. Everyone was behind it, which was another lie that sounded like the truth. Dangerous. I remember feeling nervous, but also empowered by those who encircled me and told me what to write in that letter. I got pats on the back. The attention was intoxicating as I slipped the terrible note in Mary's desk. As I was slipping that note into her desk, there were smiling eyes at me. It felt amazing to have so much approval. But the next day, I looked out the window and I saw Mr. Stang with that very letter in his hand heading to the principal's office. And, over the loudspeaker, Mr. Mickelson said my name and called me to the office. All those smiling eyes that were at me now were averted eyes. When I arrived at Mr. Mickelson's office, he was waiting for me and he escorted me to his office. I felt like a criminal. I sat down on the uncomfortable chair in front of Mr. Mickelson's desk. He didn't have to say a word, but all of a sudden I busted out into tears. Mr. Mickelson waited a moment until I pulled myself together and he said, Kathy, I can't believe you wrote this letter. 
I was not going to tell on my supposed new friends. I suppose my response might have been, the devil made me do it, but that probably would have got me into more trouble. I knew I was wrong. I gave in to temptation. Temptation of power and attention and popularity. Fortunately, Mr. Mickelson knew me, and he was full of grace. He knew that I would beat myself up more than any punishment that he could give me. In that moment, I just wanted to begin again. We sat in uncomfortable silence, a wilderness in many ways. But after a while, he walked over to the door and said, Kathy, you can go back to your classroom. As I passed him, he put a hand on my shoulder and said, you're a leader. You can do better. I believe in you. As challenging as that moment was for me, I learned an incredible amount. Mr. Mickelson gave me a place to step away, to recognize my thoughts, to reorganize my thoughts, and remember who I am. And he gave me a chance to begin again as I walked out of the wilderness and into the classroom again. Jesus is led into the wilderness by the Spirit, which seems strange. But let's clear things up a bit. The Spirit doesn't tempt Jesus. The Spirit accompanies Jesus into the wilderness. I read a commentary comparing tempting and testing. It said to tempt is to hope for failure, and to test is a hope for success. The devil tested Jesus with three innocent temptations. Temptations that sounded like truth, but were obviously dangerous. The devil didn't try to tempt Jesus to do terrible things. He tempted Jesus to make small compromises for good reasons. He tried to get Jesus to take a small step to the edge of danger, the edge of quicksand, and picture rewards available on the other side. The devil didn't promise Jesus money or fame. He promised Jesus a more effective ministry. If he would just take the first little step. But as we learn, Jesus resists and leans on the words of Scripture to give him grounding and footing in the wilderness. We aren't Jesus. But we can learn from his wilderness story. We learn that each time we resist temptation, the tempter gives up. Well, at least for a moment. We also learn each time we resist temptation, we become stronger to resist the next temptations. The good news is even when we don't resist temptation, as in my story in middle school, God gives us second chances and new beginnings. In Jesus' wilderness story, the angels came. For me, even though I failed, Christ came through the grace of Mr. Mickelson. Sitting in the wilderness of the office, Mr. Mickelson blessed me with a new beginning. In silence, he gave me a chance to clear my brain and remember who I am and whose I am. All of us are tempted in one way or another. Many of us are tempted with power, with wealth, with popularity. We can so easily be lured in by those subtle lies that can affect and hurt others. Today, we come and we're given the gift to worship together, to clear our brains, to ask for forgiveness, to breathe and to remember who we are and whose we are. A place of wilderness where we can be reflective. A place to begin again. As you leave today, may you trust that Christ is with you, leading and guiding you, 
and giving you a new start as you begin your week ahead. And for this, we say, thanks be to God. Amen.